On many occasions, we need to access external databases from Genexus applications. For example, we may need to load data from an external database to tables of our database associated with the knowledge base in order to make an initial load. After that, we may not need to stay connected to that external database. Or, we may need to connect and stay always connected to a certain table or tables of one or more external databases. And not just to read them, but also to access and change the data in them. So let's see how we can do this in Genexus. We're using the Travel Agency Knowledge Base. Look at the menu option, Tools, Database Reverse Engineering. Selecting this option opens a wizard that allows us to apply reverse engineering to external databases. This means that for an existing database that contains tables, relationships, indexes, and so on, all the objects and configurations required for easy access will be created in Genexus. In the first page of the wizard, we start by entering the connection data to the database we want to access. Because the external database we want to access is SQL Server and DBMS, we leave SQL Server. Connection type should also be left unchanged. We enter the server and the database name. Lastly, we click on Next and move on to the second page of the wizard. The tables of the database to which we connected are displayed here. So we select the tables that we want to reverse engineer and we move them from the left window to the right window in order to access them from our knowledge base. We need to access the customer and continent tables. So we select them and we move them to the window on the right. Before clicking on Next, let's take a look at these other buttons. The Add Related button allows us to automatically add all the tables that have an end-to-one -one relationship with the tables we selected. In addition, the Save Selection button allows us to save the table selection we made, so that when running it again later, we can quickly load the same selection by clicking on the Load Selection button. So now we click on Next. The reverse engineering process begins now. That is to say, the composition and everything related to the table selected will be evaluated, and the Genexus objects required will be created. Now look at this page of the wizard that was open. It has three tabs, Report, Settings, and Rules. Let's begin by the main tab, Report. The report that we're viewing informs us about the objects created during the reverse engineering process. Note that below the Objects folder, there's a Data Views folder and a Transactions folder. Below each of them, there's an object called Continent and another one called Customer2. The first question that comes to mind is why the name Continent was kept exactly the same as the name of the external table, and why for Customer, the name of the external table, the KB objects were renamed to Customer2. The reason is that our knowledge base already had a transaction called Customer and the corresponding table with the same name. It wasn't possible to create another transaction called Customer, and that's why it was renamed to Customer2, just like the other objects created to access the Customer external table. So what is a data view object? We haven't seen it so far. A data view object allows defining and configuring information from an external table. In other words, for each external table that we need to access, there must be a data view defined in the knowledge base. Since we're in the middle of the reverse engineering process, so as not to cancel it, we will look at this image and comment how the Customer2 data view will look like. The first thing we see below composition is a list of attribute names. Note that for each attribute, there's an external name, which is the name of the physical field in the external table, and an internal name which is the name given at the knowledge base level. That is to say, the internal name is the name of the attribute included in the transaction automatically created to access the external table in an interactive manner. This is the name that will be added to all objects, including grids, events, and so on. 
Below composition, the names of the table's external fields are mapped to the corresponding internal attribute names using the Genexus naming convention. In our knowledge base, we will always make reference to internal names. When generating the code in the corresponding language, Genexus will make reference to the physical field names, taking into account the name correspondence defined in the data view. Where is the external table name for Genexus to make reference to the table when generating the code? The answer is right here. Below platforms, we can see that the external platform is SQL Server. Clicking on it shows the related properties, such as the external table name. But where is the information of the external database in which this table is located? Clicking on the main node of the data view refreshes the properties and displays the data store property. At the end of this video, we will see where data stores are defined in a knowledge base. But for now, we need to learn these concepts. Each data view contains the information of an external table. And each data store has the information required to access the database. Next, for each data view, we need to make reference to the data store it belongs to. Now we will take a look at the data view property called associated table. Its value is the name of the transaction associated with the data view. That is to say, the transaction that was also automatically created with the same name as the data view, so as to allow making additions, changes, and deletions in the external table in an interactive manner. Transactions associated with data views don't cause the creation of tables or reorganizations. They're not different from the other transactions, but if they are referenced in data views as associated tables, Genexus will only generate the form and its programming. The purpose is to allow interaction with the external table whose information is stored in the data view in question. In this regard, it should be pointed out that transactions associated with data views can have, at most, the same number of attributes as the external table. They can have fewer attributes, but not more, because Genexus doesn't reorganize external tables. Note that if any errors had occurred during this reverse engineering process, they would have been notified. By way of example, below are some of the errors that may occur and be reported. The table doesn't have a primary key. A certain attribute is auto-numbered and was selected as primary key. This happens when an external table doesn't have a primary key defined, but has an auto-numbered attribute. In this case, the auto-numbered attribute is automatically selected as primary key. Another error may occur when a certain type is not supported. The external table contains an attribute whose data type doesn't automatically match any data type handled by Genexus. Now we will talk about the other tabs offered in this page of the wizard. The settings tab, as its name suggests, allows making certain configurations. For example, generate transactions that is set to true by default. As described here, it allows us to have transactions created in order to handle the external table's data in an interactive manner. If we change the value to false, only data views are created, not transactions. The option Identify Multi-Level Transactions allows us to set whether to identify subordination relationships and to create transactions with more than one level as long as patterns that make it possible are identified. Its default value is false. As a result, Every table to be imported defines a single transaction with a single level and the related data view. The option Generate Schema is set to true by default, and this means that the table schema data is stored in the schema property of the corresponding data view. There's no need to examine each one of the possible configurations, because clicking on them displays information about what they offer. So, let's move on to the following tab. Rules. Since objects and attributes are automatically generated from an existing database, some name conflicts may occur. For this reason, the Rules tab makes it possible to define name mapping rules to solve these ambiguities. Therefore, this tab allows us to state rules to rename attributes, objects, and so on, as well as change data types and make any necessary adjustments before generating the objects. In our example, we don't need to state rules of this type, but it's very intuitive to use, as in general all editors are. This is the last step of the wizard, so we click on Finish. Now let's take a look at what it's generated. The Continent Data View, the Customer2 Data View, 
and the corresponding customer to and continent transactions. We press F5. Now we will open the customer to transaction. Remember that through the customer to transaction, we access the customer table of the external database. We can see the records that have been entered and the clients who have been registered. We enter a new client, for example, Lewis, Jones, his status is active, and we enter his address. We save, and we can see that the record has been entered in the customer table. Now we will change Susan Smith's address. And we can even delete the client we've just entered. We click on Delete, and we can see that we're working directly on the customer table through the Customer 2 transaction created by the reverse engineering process. Lastly, something we were going to talk about at the end of the video was the definition of data stores. As we've said before, a data store contains the information required to connect to a database. When we press F5 for the first time in a knowledge base, and we're prompted for the database details, a default data store is created with this information. The database related to our knowledge base is created there. It'll contain the tables that Genexus determines by examining the transactions we created. Then, as we've seen before, creating other data stores allows us to configure the information required to access other databases. Now we create the data store that will allow us to connect to the database of the example. To do so, we right-click and select New Data Store, SQL Server. We call it My Data Store, and we open its properties to enter the name of the database and server to which we connected. We edit the data store property of the data views created so that they point to the data store we've just created. We save and do the same to the customer2 data view. We select My Data Store. To view all this at runtime, we've created a very simple report with the list of continents. The source of this procedure shows that we're making reference to the continent based transaction. To run it, we right click and select Run.